Welcome to the book of Ezekiel. Uh, We just finished Isaiah, Jeremiah, which were both very heavy uh, with a person if they weren't, didn't know that God was speaking and said somebody said these things, they'd call them anti-Semitic to the extreme and probably make it illegal. But then if you told them it was God, then they would, uh, they would be shocked. But Ezekiel doesn't, it doesn't have as much of this condemnation of the Jews. It has more of, of the things that were happening, and um, it does have some of that, but at the last there's the uh, redemption of the Jews and the, the city uh, that we'll get to. And it begins, uh, anyway, with uh, the first chapter. It says, and it be- came to pass, it became, again, it became uh, in the... 30th year in the fourth month, the fifth of the month. Now, exactly what this 30th year would be in his 30th year, I'm not exactly sure. Um, 30th doesn't say. So, uh, but he was anyway, he was in the midst of the captivity by the river uh, Hovar. Now, there's a lot of speculation of where he's talking about. He doesn't actually say the Tigris and Euphrates, but there are some uh, references that call this uh, the air, that, area, that area between the Tigris and the Euphrates, and others say that uh, the, uh, the river Hovar is a tributary of the Euphrates, which is in northern Syria, uh, which could be where they were coming uh, from Israel and going around the Fertile Crescent, coming up to the Euphrates and going down, and anyway, they were at this river. And the heavens were opened, and I beheld visions of God. So he actually says visions of God, here what he saw, and uh, the heavens. And we know that Jesus came to the earth, and he came from the heavens. And he mentions his Father being in the heaven, and Jesus returned into the heaven, when the, um, and the disciples saw it. And on the fifth of the month, uh, this is the fifth year of the captivity of King uh, Eoakim, that's Jehoiachin. He, he only reigned for a short period of time, was taken to Babylon. I believe he was set up by Pharaoh Necho, and Nebuchadnezzar had defeated Necho, came down and uh, took Jehoiachin out, and I believe then he put in Jehoiakim. Uh, Jehoiachim was uh, the son of, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of it, one of the, he was a grandson of Josiah, where Jehoiakim, this must have been then during the reign of Jehoiakim, uh, he was a, a son of, uh, or uncle of Jehoiachin. But Jehoiachin was taken and uh, to Babylon. And it, this is uh, the fifth year that he was gone. And is that the word of the Lord, the Logos, came to Ezekiel, the son of Buzi, the priest in the land of the Chaldeans. Now, it's not in the first person where it says it came to me, Ezekiel, the son of Buzi, but uh, this was um, a narration by somebody and saying that this is what happened, who he was, a son of Abuzi. Uh, he was a priest uh, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chabar, again, the same river in the land of the Chaldeans, uh, sounds like it could have uh, been the first of the possibilities of, between the Tigris and Euphrates down further south, because generally the Chaldean land is in the southern part. And uh, the hand of the Lord came upon me, and I beheld, and behold, a wind, a pnevma. Now, we have animos later is also a wind. Um, a pnevma is uh, a breath is used, and we use pneumatics and the spirit. The Holy Spirit is the agios pnevma. So a wind uh, lifting up came from the north. Now before the north was where these armies came down against uh, Jerusalem and Israel. But he saw this wind uh, coming up uh, and a great cloud with it. And uh, a brightness of Fengos uh, is um, 
the brightness was round about, and uh, the fire was flashing, and there was flashing fire, pure pyromania as a derivative, and in the midst of it was a vision of molten bronze in the midst of the fire and brightness in it. So uh, he sees this uh, fire flashing, sort of reminds me of um, Moses in the, fire, in the burning bush. And so he sees this vision of this bright molten bronze, like a volcano where the, all the molten lava is coming out, and it's real bright. And in the midst of the fire uh, was this molten bronze, like the volcano, and brightness was in it. And in the midst, the meso, the mesoderm, the middle layer of the skin, comes from that word, was as a likeness of for zone. Uh, zoo, it comes from that word. Uh, living creatures. Now these were um, some type of a heavenly being. And we are given uh, this vision here of uh, the uh, living creatures that he saw. Now, there are other living creatures. It'll mention it was the seraphim, which were a little bit different. There were angels and so forth. Uh, but this is um, a living creature, and later it's called the cherubim. And uh, this is their vision. This is what they look like. It was a likeness of a man was unto them. So there was somehow a likeness of a man uh, to these four living creatures. Maybe he had and they had legs, and we see here, and there was four faces to the one and four wings to the one. And their legs were straight, and their feet feathered, and there were sparks as flashing brass, and their wings were light, uh, so they could fly. Now, as the seraphim in Isaiah uh, had uh, six, they had six wings. And I believe that uh, and that goes along with Revelation uh, 4, 8 to 11. That's chapter 4, 8 to 11, where the creatures, the zone, which are called Revelation, uh, have the six wings as the seraphim. So these are not the same as what John saw, apparently. Now, this is an important thing because there is a difference here. And later on, when we get to the location of the city, a lot of people want it to be Jerusalem. It's in the last 10 chapters. But when you read the chapters, you see it's not. And um, even though there's a lot of similarities, and you would assume that it was the same, but the differences are striking. So here, uh, the difference between the seraphim and the cherubim, they are not the same, are the uh, zone in the New Testament. There are many th possible creatures that are in heaven uh, that we will see when we arrive there, and so now uh, we get to see what they are, and when we get there, we'll look around, and oh, well, four wings, that's, that's a cherubim, and then you go see another one, and look something different, oh, six wings, that's a, that's a seraphim, so we get to uh, see these things, and the angels, and uh, we're going to be different, uh, and uh, so forth, and uh, their legs were straight, so they had these wings, the likeness of a man, uh, and their feet were feathered, some type of a feathered feet. And there were sparks as a flash brass, halcos, the chalcolithic era, the brass age, bronze age, comes from that, halcolithic. And their wings were light. And the hand of a man was beneath their wings upon their four parts. And their faces and their wings of the four were being nixed to the other of the other. So parent, some type of a creature that had the four uh, types of uh, human forms with different faces, but they were in one, apparently. They had these wings. And their wings, the uh, petrigas, uh, we have petra, petra, we have a helicopter, petr comes from that, the winged helio, sun, winged sun uh, from a helicopter. Their wings turned not in they're proceeding. Uh, each went opposite their face. So they m moved and their wings. So I'm not exactly sure. It sounds like they had the motion 
without necessarily flying also, but I wouldn't know why they would have wings then, but the likeness of their faces was as one, a man. Okay, now uh, the four faces uh, here are the same as uh, the four that are in the book of Revelation, uh, the face of a lion from out of the right to the four, and the face of a calf from out of the left to the four, and the face of an eagle to the four. Now, I'm not exactly sure about the spacing in the book of Revelation, but I uh, have the, these faces. Uh, and But yet, they didn't, in Revelation, they had the six wings. So there's a, 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 a com, comparison is uh, amazing because it's they're so similar. Some people would probably try to stretch it and make it somehow they lost or they gained, grew wings and they became different. But uh, it says, and their wings were stretching out above. Anothen is above. Uh, this is what Jesus told Nicodemus. You must be born from Anothen, from above. It's not being born again. Although Peter talks about paleogenesis, which is being born again. So there is a being born again, but there, Jesus said being born from Anothen, above. So their wings were stretching out to the four each. So they're all... Uh, wings are touching, two being yoked together to one another and two covered up upon their body. And uh, so uh, the interesting creatures with these wings and the bodies and the faces, uh, and each to the other went in front of him. So whenever one would go I, one, one way with the man or the he would go straight, then the other ones would go along with him be tied together. And wherever the spirit, now we got the pneuma, was going, so the same word as before he saw a wind. Uh, I suppose you could say he saw a spirit coming from the north, but um, just, see, this is what's nice about the Greek, is you can see that this is uh, the duality of the usage of this word pneuma right in this chapter. If you didn't have the Greek, uh, and this is the Old Testament Greek, uh, you lose out on so much. So uh, to me, the Apostolic Bible is a really a great study tool for you. I just finished uh, a grammar study guide slash study guide, put it up on the Internet on a website, and it's free to download so you can uh, go through there and learn about Greek grammar without having to go and do any memorization, just using our analytical lexicon which is available either in book form or for $4.95 for a download, cheap. And uh, you'll learn a lot with this tool. I spent about a month uh, putting that together, and that's why I uh, have been tardy to get back into Ezekiel. But we are here. So in the midst of the zone, the zoo again was the derivative, the zoo was as visions of anthracone, anthrax, coal. It's coals of pyros, fire burning. So these living creatures had some type of, a, of burning coals and as the appearance of lamps twisting in the midst of the living creatures. Wow. <laughs> We're going to see them and they're going to have these lamps twisting and moving around. And this uh, is going to be quite a sight. And brightness was of the fire and uh, the pyros. And from out of the pyros went forth as lightning. So now we have this lightning shooting out all over. Uh, this, this, all, the, all this is going on with these creatures. And the living creatures were running and returning as the appearance of the lightning. The bezek is a Hebrew word. So now they're uh, running and returning, going back and forth. So when we get there, we'll see these creatures moving fast, apparently. The wheels, and I beheld, and behold, one trochos was upon epi tisgis, was upon the earth, being next to the living creatures, to the four. This uh, trochos, we have a troche, is a little lozenge, round lozenge, they call it a tro troche, it comes from this word. So uh, there is some type of a round object now we're seeing next to the four living creatures, and the sight of the trochone the plural, of the wheels, and their action was as the sight of Tharsis 
stone. Well, I'm not exactly sure what Tharsis stone is, uh, but uh, probably shining. And there was a one likeness to the four. And their work was as if it may be a wheel in a wheel. So some type of a wheel that have four parts, I'm not exactly sure. A wheel in a wheel, uh, like a, uh, for what they call those things that they're, they use them for tops. And they have a wheel inside of another one and it turns. Something like that. I, I can't think of what that, word, what that object is. And upon their four parts, they went. It's just uh, as the four, uh, as the four uh, images of the of the zone. So these also had the four parts, and they went and they turned not in their going. So they moved the same way, and they were next to the living creatures. So now we're seeing more. So when we see these living creatures, we'll see these wheels, the cherubim, and yet their backs uh, and height was. To them, so there was a form of some sort. Uh, a height was to them, a backs, a back, and maybe curved. And I beheld them, and their backs were full of eyes, ophthalmon, round about to the four. There was like maybe type window type things. And well, we'll see them when we see these wheels and round with something that looks like windows or eyes. Then we'll know what they are. And in the going, <clears throat> the living creatures went, the wheels being next to them. So here those wheel of living creature, one went, the lion would go straight and the wheel would go along with them. And the wheel, somehow uh, one of the four parts of the wheels would be a certain way. Uh, quite, a, quite a contraption <laughs> that God has made here. That's amazing that when we see these things, we're not used to these types of things. Uh, we see what we see today. Of course, you could also look and say, well, Ezekiel had never seen an automobile, so there may be something, some people would say, well, there's something that's like what we have today with uh, airplanes and uh, all sorts of things. They've made movies uh, out of the possible extraterrestrial uh, objects and the in close encounters of the third kind. had this spaceship coming down with all these windows with, little people in them, and so forth. So somebody could say, well, this is what he saw, is something that we have today. Well, I don't know. I think when we get to see them, they're going to be an amazing sight. And in the, I didn't have a, a link here. I must have missed it. And in the lifting away the creatures from the earth, uh, the that's the zoa, zoa the plural, uh, the wheels lifted away. And wherever the cloud was, there the spirit, the pneuma, was to go. And as the living creatures went, the wheels also lifted away with them. For pneuma of life was in the wheels. Now, does it mean that this um, was actually a living wheel that breathed somehow, had some sort of a life? Or does it mean there was some people that were living inside of uh, the wheel, uh, for spirit of life in the wheel, uh, in the wheels. So I don't know, could be the one I suppose, and I'm not sure. And in their going, uh, the wheels went, and in their standing, the wheels stood, and that would be the zone. And in their lifting away from the earth, the wheels lifted away with them, for spirit of life was in the wheels. So they could go forward, backward, sideways, all the four ways from the four faces, and then they could go up. And the wheels lifted up from the earth with them, went wherever they went. Pretty neat. And the likeness, eper, a prayer, uh, is a preposition above, hyper, comes from that, and above the head of the zone was as a firmament, and that is like what was a, at the beginning, we had a firmament before the earth. Uh, it was of a, a firmament, some type of a stereoma, some type of a uh, form of some type of uh, elements of some sort, let's say. 
And here is as a vision of cristalu, uh, of ice, uh, crystal, uh, could be something like that, a bring stretched out over their wings on top. So here we have these uh, beings with the wheels, and then up above, you look up, and you see this crystal or glass, and whoa, so what is that all about? And underneath the firmament, their wings were stretching out, flapping. Now, does that mean they're flying? I don't know, but they were flapping. Could be just that they flap. They didn't actually uh, go because of the flapping. They were able to go on their own. But they did have these wings, and they flapped. And the other to the other, uh, to each two covering their body. So the wings covered their bodies, and the wings flapped above, and so forth. And I heard echoon, uh, acoustic, acoustics comes from that, or an echo. I heard the phony, and the phone, t- telephone comes from that word. Uh, I heard the sound of their wings in their going as the sound of much water. So, whoosh, some type of a sound. I, I live on the ocean. Had a friend that came from Calif- uh, Canada, never had been to the ocean. And the one thing that he couldn't, un- he couldn't believe that he, was how loud it was. And uh, there are some days when the breakers of the waves are crashing so loud it sounds like thunder as it rolls down the beach. Now, it doesn't happen very often, but normally uh, the sound of the, uh, of the waves is fairly loud. And so the sound of much water is a sound of a worthy one in their going. Uh, a worthy one. Now, I'm not exactly sure what, what it means, something that you would probably pay attention to, and a sound of the word, uh, and a sound of a camp, and in their standing, their wings rested. So we have the sound of much water, uh, worthy ones being uh, striking, the, a sound of a word, somehow it, there's a communication of some sort, and a sound of a camp, of somehow uh, this uh, echo maybe uh, th- of the things that are going on that they are able to uh, broadcast out with this all this uh, sound. Uh, the word sounds like that would be something that would be understandable. So somehow type of a communication that I see from these beings. And the vision of a throne. I beheld a phony, a phone again, a sound far above the stereomatos, far above the firmament, that was that was above the cherubim, above the zone was the firmament, so far above that, so it was like a glass, you could see through it, or a crystal, and, um, and of, of the one being above their head. It was as a vision of a stone of sapphire with the likeness of a throne upon it. So now we have uh, this above the zone, we have the firmament, and then on top of that is some type of a sapphire stone, and on top of that was a throne, thronu. We have the derivative from that, a throne. And upon the likeness of the thronu was a likeness as a form of a man from above. Um, And so Jesus came from heaven and took the form of a man. And we'll hear in a well, in a second, we'll go to a verse in Revelation where it shows that. And I beheld as an appearance of molten bronze as a vision of fire within it round about. So here's that molten bronze again with a fire and the vision uh, of the loin and up. So um, molten bronze and the fire and from the vision of the loin unto below, I beheld the vision as of fire and it's brightness round about. We go to the New Testament. It says, And in the midst of the seven lamps, one likened to Son of Man, being clothed with a foot-length robe and being girded to the breasts with a golden belt. And of his head, even the hairs were white as wool, white as snow, and his eyes as a flame of fire. So now we're getting into this fire. And his feet were likened to fine brass, as in a furnace, being with fire, And his voice was as a sound of many waters. It's very similar to what we're 
seeing, hearing, Ezekiel. And as a vision of a bow, a toksu uh, is a bow, like a bow and arrow, um, whenever it might be in the cloud, in the day of the Eatu, Hayatol comes from that, the Hayatol rains. So the vision of a bow, whenever it's in the day of rain, thus was the position of the brightness around about. This is the vision of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And I beheld, I fell on my face, and I heard a voice speaking. So I believe that Ezekiel saw Jesus, who took a form of a man. Here, it took the form of a man on earth, uh, but is uh, way more than a form of a man. Uh, the Creator can take any form that He wants. And a Theophanes appeared when Jehovah appeared on the earth, and here is a, a, a Theophany of becoming of, of a man type figure to Ezekiel. And not only that, then he hears a voice speaking, uh, just as John heard when he was communicating with the heavenly beings. Chapter 2, we'll get the next chapter, we'll find out all the things that were told to Ezekiel. I hope you'll join us in chapter 2, and God bless.